Hey there friends, Martin here and yeah, lately I've been especially fed up with the corporate giant Adobe. I even unsubscribed from Substance Painter after so many years of its use and I'm in the process of getting away from software like Adobe Premiere, Photoshop and After Effects. And when I learned that Blender 5.0 now has some exciting new updates to its video sequencer, I needed to investigate. So the question is, is Blender 5.0 an alternative to Adobe Premiere? And instead of just answering this, I will rather give you an introduction to Blender Sequencer, then you can make up your mind. A spoiler though, it's getting pretty good. By the way, I would first like to thank all my patrons over at patreon.com. You make this channel possible guys, so thank you very much, appreciate it. Previously, there were several important aspects that kept me from using Blender Sequencer for my video editing needs. Mostly its speed, or rather its terrible slowness. There were some important tools missing as well, like the slip tool or some proper strip handling. But that seems to have been resolved in the newest version. The one thing that really got me excited though is the new option to edit your 3D scenes while you're editing your video. So let's have a look at all that in this video. I have these two scenes inside my Blender file. The Spartan turning to camera and good old Nikephoros chilling on a hill here. Each scene has its animated camera, the second one even has a few cuts using the bind camera markers and if you don't know these by the way you can easily create them in your timeline by selecting a camera that you want to cut to and then hitting Ctrl B in the window here and Blender will then cut to each of the assigned cameras. Okay now, what I want to do is to put these on a video editing timeline and sequence them in a single video. So let me actually go ahead and add a new layout, choose this video editing one, create a new scene and let's call it edit. That created a whole new scene inside this Blender file, you can see it right here. Onto this timeline, I can now add anything from a pre-rendered video to an image sequence, sounds, music, even solid color and text. But that's not what we're doing right now. We want to add our animated scenes from inside the Blender file. So let's find them here. Choose the Spartan first and drag it wherever you like. By the way, this is one of the changes of the new version. Once you add anything from the Add menu, it will first be dropped where your mouse is and you can immediately move it around. Let's put the strip here at the beginning of the timeline and now add the other one right behind it. I recommend leaving the preview here to shade it because setting it to rendered will usually slow down the responsiveness to complete crawl. When you start scrubbing through it will cache the frames but pretty slowly. So shaded it is. And for faster preview you can also choose this frame dropping playback which makes the speed priority. Much more responsive this way. What I also like to do is to uncheck this use timecode option to just preview the frames same as you're used to on the timeline. It used to be that we actually had to add a separate timeline window down here to have access to these playback buttons. In Blender 5.0 the sequence window has it by default so yeah much more convenient. Let's now make a simple edit of these strips here changing their length and timing from the original scenes timeline. So we can take this first one and since there is a lot of empty space at the end of the shot with no real animation in here, I think we can make it shorter. Let's grab the edge of the strip and drag it like this. Newly there is now a slip tool in the tools menu, shortcut S, which allows you to slide the content of the strips instead of just playing with the in and outs. Besides that, circle and lasso selection tools have been added as well. Let's have a look at this second strip here. I think it starts a bit too early. So let's scrub to where Nikifor starts raising his hand. And here with the strip selected, hit K. Delete this leftover portion and go here. Choose the delete gaps or just backspace. That will make the strip go directly where the previous one ends, getting rid of the empty space. An actual ripple delete option like in Premiere would be nice, but let's hope for it in the future versions. And now let me quickly make this new layout, add a big viewport window here on the left with timeline at the bottom and you can save it as scene slash editing layout. This way we can have a look at the simultaneous editing feature. 
As you can see, my 3D scene edit is empty. It only contained my editing timeline here. And in Blender 4.5 and below, if I switched here to one of the other scenes, the editing timeline would change to that scene as well. Now though, the devs actually made it independent. So I can now fiddle inside one of the scenes present in my file and then the changes are directly visible in here in the video editing preview window. So no re-rendering needed. How cool is that? In this case, it's super useful to synchronize the time between your scenes and the sequencer with this button over here, which is a simple way to keep multiple scenes in perfect sync during scrubbing and playback. What about rendering, you ask? Which scene will be rendered when I hit F12? Easy, just open up this menu and here you have the option to render the active scene using F12 or Alt F12 to render the sequencer scene. With larger scenes that are slower to playback, this simultaneous editing functionality falls apart a bit because working with them gets even slower in the editor. But for smaller scenes, simpler animations and previous, this is absolutely awesome, making the process of experimenting and making new animation sequences so much faster. With a bit more added performance and streamlining, I believe this will become a gold standard for me, not needing to render out all my shots before editing them. Still, for larger scenes and final edits, I actually recommend doing that to be able to work much faster with your strips. So let's change to another file where we can add some already pre-rendered shots. You can put in any video files here. And also, if you have image sequences in a folder, just select all of the frames in the folder, load it, and it will function as a video strip too. First thing I like to do here is to right click on this movie strip menu and set it to render size so that our blend file is set to the same resolution as our strip. And while at it, you can also set the correct FPS. In my case, this is 24. By the way, if you want to learn everything there is to know, or at least uh, what I know from my studies at film school, definitely check out my CG Boost course, Master Cinematic Storytelling, where I take you from complete basics of film and art language to editing your own shot sequences and even short films directly inside of Blender. It's like a film school for 3D artists and I've really poured everything I know about filmmaking into it. At this point, I want to highlight a super important feature that changed its location. It's the prefetching option, which is now located here in the sequencer's shelf menu. Once you hit it, Blender will quickly pre-render your strips to be able to play them without any lag. Sometimes though, when you, for example, re-render your shot and the source changes, you'll want to refresh your strips and you do that by using the Ctrl E shortcut. That will ensure that all the new changes in your source file are displayed. Another thing I haven't mentioned yet, you can color tag your strips in this menu. A small thing, but neat and great for having the timeline more organized. Let's add some audio as well, a short music track to accompany these shots. And at the end we can do what I usually do for my short video content. It is to use the text tool to type in my web page address. And you can edit it in here, in the strip menu, in the properties. So uh, heroesofbronze.com and change the font to, for example, the Avignon Demi. And in here, let's keyframe the X and Y scale to increase a bit in time. And in the graph editor, set the animation from Bezier to linear, so it doesn't speed up and slow down. Nice. And now, I usually take one of my shots, duplicate them, and put it underneath this, and make them really dark and desaturated. And, oh, how convenient. I can actually demonstrate another awesome feature on this. Because in Blender 5.0, you can actually access Compositor for each of the strips on your timeline. Which is a huge thing, it allows you to add so many effects and their combinations directly when editing. For that, let's switch to Compositor and also have a look at here where this new section is in the properties. It's for the strip modifiers, because newly you add them right here as opposed to the sequencer shelf. This is much more in line with how adding modifiers functions when working with objects in 3D viewport 
So definitely a great UI choice. And here, apart from some basic ones that you would expect in any editing software, lo and behold, there is the option to add the compositor. Just make a new compositing group, find it here in the compositor window, and you can layer here any number of effects that you like. So for us, use the curves node and bring the highlight point down like this, and then the hue saturation node and desaturate. We could have in fact used just this value option instead of the curves, but uh, yeah, I wanted to show you how easy it is to layer effects now. Good, that's it. Better yet, let's add another composition group on another strip. I name it based on this shot so that I can differentiate it and then load it up down here. And see, you can now use presets, which includes some of the most common effects like the vignette, split toning, chromatic aberration, and even some that were previously very difficult to make, for example, film grain. This is such a great addition, something I really wanted to have in Blender for a long time, and I really can't stress enough how exciting this is. If you like using professional tools like Vectorscope, Histogram and others, you'll have to open up a new preview window and set them up here. They're much faster and better looking now. So that's a great thing for people who know their way around coloring and grading shots. So now we have two shots, some music, a title at the end with a shot below it. And now we can just go to properties. And if you want to render out a video, just set it right here in the output, in the encoding, and you can probably switch to MP4, H264 codec. Don't forget the audio. Specify where you want to store your video and then hit render sequence. That's how easy it is to use Blender Sequencer and how far it's come in the latest version. When it comes to video editing features, almost everything I wanted is already in, ready to be used and enjoyed especially since the software is and will remain free. So yeah, maybe now it's finally time to start using Blender Sequencer in your own animation pipeline. I know that I will be testing it out for the future Heroes of Bronze productions. So until next time, stay creative my friends, Martin out.